word reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up, and let us run from the endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who, initi who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Doing good? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You guys look beautiful in here. Praise God. This reminds me of a song I heard. Super old. You probably can't even find a track for it. It says, uh, And I shall wear a crown. Anybody? And I shall wear a crown When it's all over Maybe some of those old gospel people. Do you remember? When it's all over, one of my favorite verses is, and I shall see his face. Can't wait. I shall see his face. When it's all over. When it's all over, picture this, come on. And I'm going to put on my robe, tell the story of how I made it over. Oh, and I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the story of how I made it over. Oh, somebody, I'm gonna put on my robe. Tell the story of how I made it over. Oh, and I'm gonna put on my robe. Tell the story of how I made it over. Oh, listen to what he says. As soon as I get home. Amen. As soon as I get Home. How many of us can't wait till we get there? Woo! Man. Truth be told, church, there are some days that I'm just done with this world. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm just done. You ever hear the viejito say, Ya, estoy listo. I'm ready. Take me. I'm ready. You know, we're going to begin to learn that because we're going to learn that today the, the word's called running on empty. And that's how we feel. When you, when you have, when you get to meet these elders and these saints that have been running this race for a while, we're going to learn about a race today, you're tired. Estoy cansado. And we look at it like, no, mom, no, grandma, don't go. But they're seeing something different than we're seeing. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to First Christian Church. I just, I just, for whatever reason, sorry, I'm way off track already. But first of all, I want to thank my wife, uh, who literally covered everything that I had to do yesterday within our family to be able to prepare for today. She shouldered uh, a lot of the house and everything that has to be done, so I want to thank her and give her honor, amen? Um, running on empty. I mean, can we be honest? Yes. Some of us are so <laughs> ready to grab our coffee in the morning just to get going. I want three shots of espresso, four shots of espresso, five shots of espresso. Bring me another coffee. Big old coffee mugs like this. Y'all see people drink coffee mugs like this? Man, they are just running on empty. Thank you, Tristan. And I think we can all relate these days that it's normal. 
You know, we have dads who get up early, some of them, uh, who work late nights. They work 24-hour shifts. Some guys, moms pulling shifts, going to school, managing the house. We just talked about how tiring that is. Some of us men, I know I did, rude awakening when it was like, oh, I'll stay home and watch the kids. Wow. Rather be at work, right? It's a lot more work. Amen. Parents that are raising children, people that are caring for the elderly, and then for their young people, there's homework, there's homework, there's homework, there's reading, right? There's practice for every sport. You, I mean, everything has practice. Cheer practice, football practice, volleyball practice, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and all of you are taxis running back and forth. Are you tired yet? Just thinking about it. Our life and this life runs 100 miles an hour, church. It's just going and going. We're just trying to keep up. Truth is, we are all tired. We are all weary. And praise God that in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, what does he say? Come to me. All who are labor and weary or tired and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. What are we tired from? What are we exhausted of? And why are we running on empty? This morning, our text, our, our verse that Tristan just read, and we're going to reread it here in a minute. But I just want to sum this up for you. Hopefully, nobody's falling asleep. But we are tired, brothers and sisters, believers, of just living the Christian life. It's exhausting to live the Christian life. Can we be real? Can we be honest? Yes. And it's funny because uh, if you don't know Christ, if you haven't missed Christ, it was even more exhausting. Amen? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, most of us come because we were just tired of ourselves, tired of our situation, tired of just failure, tired of the hurt, tired of everything. But even as a Christian, the Christian life is exhausting. Trying to follow Christ. Trying to live out our sanctification. That's just a big word of saying, I'm trying to do the right thing. And I mess up all the time, brother. I say the wrong things and I do the wrong things. And I'm just trying and I'm trying and I'm trying. That's why when you sing those songs, and I'm going to put on my robe because I finally made it. And God, sometimes I just want to get there. I'm just, I can picture those songs that talk about when we finally get past the end of the race where Jesus is be there. I just want to fall in his arms and say, God, I made it. And we're running a race. That's what the text said. There's a lot of questions today. Why am I so tired? Am I supposed to be tired? Am I not supposed to be tired? Am I running the race? Am I in the race? Am I slowing down? All good questions and great conversation. We're going to read the text one more time. I don't know if you have it up there. And I'm going to bounce between the uh, New Living and the NIV. But whatever is up there, you'll get it. Therefore, comma, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also set aside every encumbrance, or for some of y'all, it'll say the weight, like extra weight. Set aside every weight that slows us down and the sin which so easily entangles us or trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured, that's the second time they used endure, endurance and endured, the cross, despising or disregarding the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then the, the verse number three is super important, and I want you to hold on to this. It says, think of all the hostility that he endured. Think of all the stuff that he went through from all the sinful people, which is us, not just the people that were mean. And if you think about it, then you won't become weary and tired. And you won't give up. Amen. Truth is, church, that idea of giving up is just there right here. I mean, it's just so close to us every day. It, giving up, especially for things of the Lord. I need to take a break. I need to step back. 
I need to, you know, let someone else. I need to slow down. I need to stop. Amen? But he says here, think of all that he endured. Then you won't become weary. This is going to be a great word in the in, in season for someone. I know it is for me. Um, as you know, we, we run. You know, all of you. This is a working church. This is not a country club. This is a battleship of a church. All hands on deck. All the time. People are working. We need to get to work. Amen? For the kingdom of God. Amen? So is anybody in here, if you want to know if this is for you, is anybody in here physically tired? I know I am. I tried to do some stuff yesterday and I shouldn't have done I know Carter has got practice, football practice, being emotionally tired, just going through some stuff, going through some situations in your life. How many of us are spiritually tired, tired of people, tired of people at our work, tired of being mistreated, tired of family, tired of ministry, tired of this church? You're ready to slow down, ready to step back and give in or give up. If this is you. This is our word. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we are just in awe of how great you are. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the hope. We thank you for the resurrection. Guide us through your word today. Speak to our hearts and minds. You know that we are tired and weary. And we are all seeking you today. Let these words be yours to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive me, my mouth gets a little dry. There's so many ways that the Bible shows us what it's like to be a Christian. We're talking about our Christian life and what gets us exhausted. There's so many different angles to look at it. And I'm just going to cover a few because I want you to know how God, God is. Amen. So in order to help visualize what we're trying to get to here in a minute, we're going to show a couple of pictures. Okay. This will help us to understand what a daily walk is, to to strive to be like Jesus, what what it is to be a Christian, how to grow as a Christian. Some of these photos might help us, okay? Understand what the Bible says. Uh, The Bible says, first of all, that we are sons and daughters. We agree? Amen? We're sons and daughters. We have a father. Amen? And that means we're in the family of God. That means we've been born again. And the very life of God is inside us. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We say it all the time, right? Sister so-and-so, hermana, hermano. Right? We're in the same family. That means families have duties and have chores. Amen? And we have responsibilities. And when we are sons and daughters, we have a father who cares for us. And he protects us. And he provides for us. And we are supposed to be obedient to the father in heaven. Amen? Amen. That's a picture. Another picture is... The picture of being a disciple. A disciple uh, for us is students. You know, it's someone who is pursuing God, a follower of Jesus Christ. We are in the school of discipleship. The Bible calls us that. We are always trying to learn and trying to grow. And we're always searching for or should be looking for the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another picture is of being a sheep. That one's cute. Most of us, we, we, you know, as Christians, we, some of us don't like to be sheep or roam, especially the men were real macho. No, but the Bible says we're a sheep. We, in Psalm 23, it says he leads us behind green pastures and beside still waters. Amen. He takes care of us. In other words, without him, we are totally defenseless. He looks pretty defenseless. The Bible says, without him, we are not. Another picture uh, that we're doing is a soldier. The Bible tells us that we are in the Lord's army. Amen? Amen. I don't know if you realize, but when you gave your life to Christ, you signed up. You enlisted. Amen? Amen? You're in active duty. And we're in it to win the good fight. And we have an enemy. And we serve under the Lord. We serve under a banner of Jehovah Nissi, and we are marching into battle. We fight for the truth of the word of God. Amen. Another picture of what it's like to live a Christian life is as stones, as living stones. Some of us don't look, we don't look at ourselves like that. The Bible says we're living stones. Amen. That we come together. 
We form something important. We form the living temple of God. You see, all these pictures, and there's so more so different sides of the Christian life, different elements of what it is to grow and, and to, to, to follow Christ. There's so many more, and we have to live up to these things. Isn't that exhausting? That's tiring. We have to be a soldier. We have to be a lamb. We've got to be a stone. We've got to be all these things. We've got to be a disciple, a student, a teacher, a follower. We're going to have a little, uh, I'm not going to try to take too much of your time today, but I do want you to focus on a picture. And this is the picture that I want you to remain in your mind for the rest of this, this morning. And it's crazy because I don't see myself as this picture above all these other pictures I don't wake up and look in my mirror one day and, and say, I look like this. I am this. And maybe you do, maybe you didn't. But the picture that the Lord is using today in our uh, scripture is a picture of an athlete. An athlete. <laughs> I'm not your best picture of an athlete. But apparently the Lord sees us sees you as an athlete, sees me as an athlete in today's scripture. And we're going to learn a little bit about this athlete, okay? I want you to keep that in your mind. It's, it's a picture of a runner, a picture that's a, a runner that's in a race for God, amen? Now, one thing I'm going to tell you right off the bat is a runner cannot be complacent. A, a runner is not passive. A runner is moving, and a, a runner is trying to win. We have to wake up this morning and understand that we are in a race. We're in a lot of things. We're in school. We're at work. We're, you know, we have all these hobbies, all these projects that are going on. But do you wake up every morning and say, I'm going to lace up tight today and stretch out because I'm in a race, Titus. And I'm running to run. I'm running to win for the kingdom of God. We don't. That's what I want to help us remind us this morning. And besides that, guess what? We got we to gotta give as much effort in this race as possible. And we have to compete according to rules. Oh, how he, we hate rules and guidelines. Or we are disqualified. You ever been disqualified for something? DQ? So we're in a race that has rules and can be disqualified. We talk, the Bible tells us about this race the whole time. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, Do you not know that those who run the race, they all run to win? And that we run for an incorruptible prize. In Philippians chapter 3, it says, Forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead. We press on upward to the call of Jesus Christ. In Paul, uh, sec, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, it says, I have run the race. I have finished the course and I have kept the faith. That is our goal, church, Amen. when we get there. I have run the race. Are we in the race? We'll never get to say that. I have finished the course. In other words, I didn't stop. I didn't give up. I didn't slow down. And I have kept the faith. It's this picture of a runner, this athlete, that I want us to focus on today. I want this to be ingrained into your heart and to know that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, which I hope you are, and if you're not, today's a great day for you. You can enter the kingdom of God. You can be a brethren here. But if you are a believer, you are in the race. We agree? Amen. Amen. To understand this passage, I want you to think of, of one more thing, one more image that I want you to have in your hand. I promise we're done with images, but I need you to focus because I'm that kind of person. Sometimes I get like squirrel, you know, I get kind of sidetracked. <laughs> So I want you to picture a large arena, bigger than SoFi, bigger than, than Cowboy Stadium, bigger than anything that you've ever been. A large stadium, the Bible tells us. We just read it. 
a large stadium, huge, standing room only. It's jam-packed. There's a track and there's runners on there. And these runners are running a race. The Bible is going to show us here that we're going to have to shed some weights and we're going to have to get rid of some things that entangle us in this race. And there is a strength that must be from God if we are going to run the race. I'll rush to the end. I mean, to be honest, the reason we're running on empty is because we're not relying on his strength. We're relying on Moses' strength. And Moses' plans, and Moses' abilities, and Moses' ambitions, and Moses' wants, and Moses' schedule. And when I, have, uh, when I have time, and when I feel like it, that's why I'm so tired. That's why maybe you're so tired. Amen? We're running on empty. There's a strength that we have to have. Let's look at, uh, at verse 12 one more time. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd, remember the arena, of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. Let's stop there for a minute. Therefore, when you see the word therefore in the Bible, that means you have to find out what it's there for, right? That means there's something in the back, right? So we look at chapter 11, and what does it talk about? It talks about the Hall of Fame, or the Hall of Faith, I guess you can call it. All of these people, if you look back, I just, just penciled in a few. Chapter 11 talks about great examples of faith. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch, who was taken up to heaven, right? By faith, Noah built the ark. By faith, Abraham obeyed. By faith, Isaac and Jacob. By faith, Sarah was given a child. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Joseph, when he was about to die. By faith, Moses. By faith, the people of Israel. By faith, Rahab. By faith, by faith. And so he says, therefore, in verse 12, since we are surrounded by a, such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. That's what he's reminding us today. Saying, guys, we need encouragement. I know I'm probably not doing a good job of it this morning, but I'm trying to encourage you. But guess what? You can't rely on me or Javi or Bart or Elias or Paul. You cannot. The Bible has the best encouragement. He says, look at the Hall of Fame. Look at those people who were there in the Old Testament. All those people, they said the witnesses, they're not witnessing us running. They are witnesses to the faith of God, to know and say, you know what? You know what's crazy about all those people? They never saw what they were, had faith in. But they still ran the race. And that's why we talk about them today. Because they were in the hall of faith. And he says, so therefore, since we are surrounded by this huge crowd of all these people and all the people in our lives, our great-grandmas, our grandmas, all those people who believed to the day they died, they believed in a living God. And they prayed for you generationally. All those people are up in those stands that we just saw, that huge arena. So that we can look at them and say, you know what, my grandmother, you know what, Moses, not me, Moses, Sarah, Joseph. It's funny because all the situations in our lives that discourages us, they've been through. You felt you were alone? So was Rahab. You felt like you were too old? So was Abraham. All of those things. That God is asking us to look up at them. He's the writer of Hebrews says, we have, we're surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. And then he tells us, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Let's stop right there. We need to strip off some things. And, and it's not sin. Sin's going to come next. But it says all these things, encumbrances, I think there was the word, things that hold us back. These are things that are legal. These are things that are permissible. But we know not just because you can, you know, you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Amen? These are things that, that, you know, they slow us down. They're good things. But I'm here to tell you, and if you're writing this down, you can write it down. Sometimes it's the good things that keeps us from the best things in the Christian life. 
It's the good things that keep us from the best things in the Christian life. And I'm talking about good things, the fishing, the hunting, the golf, the sports, the working out, the, the you know, spending time, the, the, the sports, the, the, the work, all these good things. Sometimes those things keep us from the best things in the Christian life. And that's why we're so tired. But he says, strip those off. Did you know that the, oh, I know it's kind of gross, but the, the, the early runners back in the arenas, they ran butt naked. No clothes. And it offended the Jews and it offended the women. But they wanted to win so bad that they didn't want nothing to hinder their race. Nothing that would keep them from winning. Do we want to win that bad? No, but we like to keep our things. We like to keep our little, you know, our, what we like to do, you know, I'm done. Our, our good things. We like to hold on to them. And yet we don't have time for the things that help us grow. The things that God is asking us to dive into. The things that God is asking us to understand. These things, he says, therefore strip them off. Take them off. It's like, it's like if Brother Bart came in and. He got on the, on, the, on the blocks. Man, I can't even got shot. I mean, I can't even. <laughs> I was trying to get down. <laughs> trying to get down. I should have got you as an example. <laughs> trying to get down in those starting blocks, you know. And he's got his heels tucked up in there. And he's wearing a three-piece suit and a cowboy hat. And he's got his backpack on him. Is he in the race? Maybe. But he's not serious about winning. If I'm like that, I'm not serious about winning. I might be happy being on the team, right? I might be happy being there. And that's what some of us are. We're not, we're not ready to win this race. We're not ready to run this race. We have no intentionality on running or winning, should I say. And it's, it could be anything, guys. Netflix, you know what it is. Your phone, scrolling. There's so many things. I'm going to let you fill it in. Your own projects, your ambitions. And I want to ask you, you want to say, well, which of the things I need to strip off, Pastor? I'll ask you, how fast do you want to run? How bad do you want to win? Those are the questions that will help you figure out what you need to go, uh, and which needs to go. Any excess weight or baggage, because remember, it's the good things that are so often the enemy of the best things of the Christian life. Amen. Again, I'm not telling you you can't have outside fun. As a matter of fact, recreation is important. That means like to re. I think it's based off of recreation. Basically, like like I need to get my wheels together, you know, build myself up again. That's important. Rest and all those things. But these are spiritual things. Amen. You got to figure out what's weighing you down. And the Bible and the, the writer of Hebrews says that must go. Now he talks about the sin. Okay. Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. We call it stumbling sin. Now, you and I, we're sinful people, okay? We have lots of sin. Things that we shouldn't do that we know we need to give up for God. But in the context of this story, he's talking about one particular thing. He's referring to chapter 11. Remember he said, therefore? So he's talking about the sin of the lack of faith. And he said, well, Pastor, I got faith. I got faith. I believe in God. I trust God. But do we? Because this is a sin, the Bible says, that so easily entangles us. If it's something that we have this great control over, why is it so easily tripping us up? It's like getting on that starting block again and wearing a big, long robe. You can get started on the race, but I promise you, somewhere along that line, your feet are going to get snagged. And you're going to fall. Amen? And I love it because he says it's not a sin, but the sin. So he's talking about one particular sin, which is the lack of faith. This is why he showed them, hey, wait a minute. There's a hall of fame or a hall of faith of people who were strived in the faith, who were huge in the faith. And the sin is simply failing to trust God. How are we failing, church, to trust God? Can you ask yourself that? I can't answer that for you. I know how I'm failing to trust God. I know sometimes I'm scared about things that I don't need to be scared about. I'm not worried about things that I don't need to be worried about. That's failing to trust God. Amen? Failing to trust God in the hard times. 
But the Bible says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. But church, we have to trust God. Ask yourself this morning, where do you need to trust God this morning? In what capacity? Amen. Think about it. Is it my job? Am I afraid am I going to get fired if I ask for Sundays? I'm just creating scenarios. Is it, is it my kids? Am I not trusting God? Am I, am I so worried when they go to school that I'm just terrified? Is it your finances? Just, just don't want to hold them to Malachi. Just, I don't, I can't. I'm sorry, God. I just don't, I can't. Is it our parenting where we don't trust God with? Is it your family you don't trust? Is it your wife that you don't trust God with? Is it your husband? Is it your ministry we don't trust God with? Whatever it is, the sin of failing to trust God easily entangles us. Amen? That's why it is important in every part of our Christian lives that we run this race is a step, a step of faith. Guess what? We entered this race by faith. Amen? Amen. When we said, Lord, I receive you in my heart. You're going to take this on from now on. You're going to make this heart flesh again. I, that was faith, church. So you entered this race by faith, and now we need to grow and mature by faith. We develop by faith. And there's something worse than tripping and falling, and that's just to stop running altogether. That's just saying, you know what? I can't anymore. I can't serve like this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And truth is, we all go through that. Don't think you're the only one who wakes up and says, I don't know if I can serve this church anymore. I don't know if I can do this anymore. And God's telling us in his word, man, I cried so hard last night when I was reading this. And I said, you're so stupid, Moses. You depended on an encouragement, which I do have a very encouraging team in our church. But here the whole time, he dedicated a whole chapter to saying, look at Abraham. Look at Joseph. Look over here. Look over there. And I'm there, man, I wish. I don't know. Look at what happened here. Look at what I did over there. Later, he says, we need to run this race with endurance or patience. That means we need to be running. It's a present tense. That means we're not walking. We're not jogging. We're not slowing down. We're not taking a break. We are constantly moving. Amen. The word endurance means you have to be moving under pressure, under stress, under trials. Are we there? Yes, we are. You are there. I know you're there. Or maybe I'm the only one going through stress and trials. I know we're not. Because why? The Bible warned us about which, not warned us, but also helped us, gave us the tools to survive this Christian life. And he knew we'd be running on fumes. He says, be steadfast. And the writer says, let us run with endurance no matter how our, tire, our legs get. No matter how heavy our arms get. No matter how painful our feet get. We must always be pressing upward and forward to the call of God of Jesus Christ. As long as you're in this race, church, we have to be running. You know, some of us are looking so forward to retiring. Amen? Amen? From our jobs, praise God, we're counting the days. And you may retire from your job and from your career, but I'm sorry to tell you, you will never retire from the work of the Lord. Amen. You will never retire from running this race. And as long as you and I are on this planet and that we are breathing, we have to press on. I love how... Knowing that endurance is hard and that it's, it's such a big word and it's, it's, it's like, oh, I got to endure. I got to agony. Agon means agony, right? The pain. I got to go through this. And he says, wait a minute. But let's, let's look at Jesus and how he endured. For what? For the joy set before him. What was the joy set before him? The joy set before Jesus. The reason he went to the cross. The reason he stayed on there. He could have gone down at any moment. 
Right? We talked about that last time. He could have called thousands upon thousands of angels, but he endured the cross because he saw what was set before him. And what was set before him is set before you, which is the ability to live and reign and be resurrected with the living Christ by the right hand of God. And because of that, we endure. That's why we persevere. That's why we push through. That's why we don't stop running. It has to be that vision before. Can you see it? Man, because we see a lot in front of our phones, on TV, our work. We see so many things. But can you visualize the end of this race? Can you see this huge ribbon in front of this great arena? You have these witnesses that are up there cheering you on. We can look to them for examples. And they're saying, run, don't stop, keep going. I know you're tired. I know you're in pain. I know this hurts. I know people are hurting you. But there is something set before you that was set before Jesus. He went through it first. So that we can see it, so that we can talk about it. And that is to live with him in heaven forever. You want to rest? You want to finally rest? You want to fall into his arms? That is where you finish. That's why when he got there, it wasn't, it is finished, like I'm done. No, my race is finished, Jesus said. My race is finished. He said, it is finished at the cross. And that's where he wants to give us another example but why are we so tired? It's because we don't read it enough. We don't, we might know it and we forget it and we don't read the word. We don't dive in. We don't pray like we used or should. Amen? We don't. We have all these other things, these weights that are along with, all with us throughout the week. All these things we have to do. All these places we have to be. All these ambitions that we must follow. These desires that we have. They're meaningless, says Solomon. Meaningless. I just want to point out, church, a lot of us are running on empty because we are out of shape spiritually. As much as I am out of shape physically, we are out of shape spiritually. Amen. We're hurting. Back hurts, brother. You've been, you've been taking care of yourself, so I can't use you as an example. But my back hurts. I mean, I can hurt myself by just twisting the wrong way. The other day in the tractor, I just looked back. <laughs> because I'm out of shape. I'm out of shape. That's how we are, church, spiritually sometimes. Moses, I'm the first of them. I get too caught up in what's going on, too caught up in my life, too caught up in my job, too caught up in the ministry, and I forget what it is really about. We have too many uh, unfit, you know, couch potatoes spiritually. I'm one of them. I sit on my sofa sometimes and I just eat chips. <laughs> Cereal. And I watch TV in this Christian life when God says, hey, you better be stretching. You better be training. You better be working. You better be ready. You're in a race. You ain't got time for that. Instead, we need to be disciplining ourselves. These athletes, give me a picture of the athlete again. That person, he is disciplined. He's disciplined on what he does, where he thinks, what he eats, how much he sleeps. Amen. We need to be disciplining ourselves in prayer, Moses, disciplining ourselves in reading the word of God, disciplining ourselves in coming to church, disciplining ourselves in serving God, disciplining ourselves in witnessing and talking to people about God, disciplining ourselves in giving the resources that God has given us to the Lord's work to continue. We need to be disciplining ourselves. It's working out. That's what it is. It's working out, getting in shape. We need to be digging into the word, soul searching, applying the word of God to our lives, repenting from sin, uprooting the bitterness in our lives, resisting the temptation, staying on track, shedding the excess weight. We need to scare our flesh. Our flesh wants us to do a lot of things. We need to just scare the living daylights out of our flesh Amen. and take control of it. They need to, our flesh needs to be, our body needs to be a slave to us, not the other way around. Amen. As the music team comes up, um, I want to tell you a story about a girl, and I don't really know her name. I know it was in 1952. She, uh, she was a very famous swimmer, and she swam the English Channel. 
She was such a great swimmer. She actually swam across the English Channel, and then she swam back. Yeah, you've heard the story? Great story. And so she wanted to take on another great feat, something a woman had never done. And so she went from, uh, she wanted to go from the islands off of California to California, to the shore, and I think it was 21 miles. 21 miles of swimming. I can't swim the length of the pool. This woman was <laughs> swimming 21 miles. She wanted to do something it never had done before. And so she gets her team, and, and, and they surround her in the boats, right? She's swimming in the middle, just to kind of scare off the sharks or whatever. On the boat is her trainer. On the boat is her mom. These people are encouraging her. She's been training, and she begins to swim almost before they get to the other side. This fog comes over. She can't, she can't see the shoreline anymore. And she's swimming and she's swimming and all of a sudden she wants to give up. And she starts telling her mom, just get me out of here. And she says, just a little bit longer. Just hang in there. Don't give up. Keep pressing. That's what I'm here to tell you today, church. Don't give up. I know you're tired. I know you can't see the finish line sometimes. I can't either. These people that are in the hall of faith, they didn't see it. They didn't see the end. In this story, she's swimming and she's swimming and she just wants to give up. And that's us. And all the things that we were doing for the Lord. We want to step down. We want to slow down. And he says, press forward. Anyway, she says, finally, get me out, mom. Get, get me out of the water. I'm sure the mom's like, are you sure? Just keep going. Just get me out. They pull her out of the water. She's recovering in the boat. The boat stopped. The fog lifts. She was only a few hundred yards from the shore. 21 miles. They said that she was at a point where if she would have just put her feet down, she would have started walking on the, on the shore, or like on the dirt, you know, and could have just walked out of there. Church, we don't want this to be the story of our salvation. We don't want this to be the story of our lives, of our Christian walk, that we just got tired, that we just gave up, and we just... Instead, I'll encourage you, and so will everyone in here. It doesn't take a pastor. It could be your brother and sister. But you have to believe that the Word of God is the most encouraging thing on this planet. It's got more examples of persevering through pain and faith and your times of waiting. Some of us are waiting for some things, and I've been there with you, and I'm still waiting for some things as well. But you have to keep going. You have to keep running. Don't slow down. Don't start walking, and don't get out of the water. Keep moving forward. At the end of this race, there's a narrow path and a very narrow door. Amen? We need to focus on that door. We're, we're, we're in a rat race all our lives. We're in a rat race. And God doesn't want us to be in a rat race. He wants us to be in the right race. Amen? <laughs> the question this morning, church, come on, Pastor, is going to be, first of all, are we in the race? Second of all, have you committed your life to Jesus? Have you repented of your sin? Have you surrendered your life? And have you entrusted your soul to the Lord Jesus Christ? That was the accusation they didn't trust God. Are you trusting Him? Are you in the race? Are we picking up the pace? Or are we slowing down? These are things we got to look at ourselves today. Amen.